Hey guys, welcome back to the fourth video of SQL tutorial series. In this video, we will discuss about some of the different data types used in SQL and how they differ from each other. So we will discuss everything in detail. So make sure you watch this video till the end to understand that. And without wasting time, let's get started. So let's get started with our tutorial. So we will mainly focus on these three data types characters numbers and date and time because as a data engineer or as a data scientist you will be working and dealing with these data types mainly so first thing we will discuss is character so character is any symbol such as a b c d or any character numbers include whole numbers such as integers such as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 or any negative number or fractions such as like 1.368 or something like that date and times as, as you know, we have date and time, so it will store data like that. So we will discuss these things in detail. So a char is a fixed length column where the character length is specified by n. So what it means that when you specify the length of character string, let's say 5, then you can only store a string that contains 5 character. If you try to store more than that, then it will give you error or you won't be able to store that. In the, in the case of varchar, it is same, you also specify some value in n and you can store that much amount of character string so the difference between char and varchar is that when you define the character string let's say the length is 10 but if you store a string of let's say 5 character then it will consume the entire memory which is 10 but in the case of varchar let's say if you define the length as 10 but if you only store a character length of 5 then it will only consume that much memory it will not consume more than that so that is the main difference you need to understand between char and where char. And in the text, you have like the unlimited length according to PostgreSQL documentation. The longest possible character string you can store is about one gigabyte. So let's do some hands-on practice to understand characters in detail. So let me just open my PG admin. You can open your PG admin that we created in our last tutorial. Just uh, open your schema and cl click on the query tool and you can write your query over here. Now what we will do, if you already know how, you, how to create tables, then I'm just going to copy this particular query. What it does, it creates a table with the three different columns. One, one column is the varchar column, which is the length of 10. One is the character column, which is length of 10 again, and the text column. So I'm just going to use all the three different data types and I'm just going to run this particular query and it will create the table inside of our schema. Now what we will do, we will insert some data in this particular table. So that's pretty straightforward. You already know the insert query from the last video. I'm just going to insert some random values inside this particular table. And after that, you can easily query that particular table. Let's say select star from care data type. And I'm just going to run this and you'll see all the different tables. Now what we will do, we will try to insert more length of data inside this uh, char column. So inside this second particular column, I'll just add more string. I'll just remove this particular part and I'm, I'll just try to uh, insert some data over here. So as you can see, you will get some error, which is value too long for the type character 10 because because the character length that we defined for that particular data type was 10 only. So we cannot store a character string which has length more than 10 as we defined when we were creating the table. So there are multiple ways to define numbers inside the PostgreSQL. One is integers. So inside the integers, we have three things, small integers, integers, and big integer. Okay. So small int, int, integer, and big int. Now each and every data type has some type of size. Let's say small int has like two bytes, integer has four bytes and big int has eight bytes. And they can only store a value based on these range. So let's say if you define a small int and if you try to store a data which has more than this particular value, then it will give you some error. So Generally, let's say if you want to store a phone number and if you use small int, then you will get an error because you won't be able to store a phone number uh, inside the small int. You will use, you will have to use the integer, but if you use integer, then it will consume four byte inside your database. Okay. So that thing you, you just have to remember, you don't have to remember this particular number because you can get this number in the, inside the documentation. After the integer, we have serial. So serial is basically auto incremental number. So, so you can define serial as a primary key. So inside the serial, we have three things, small serial, serial, and the big serial. Again, we have the sizes for that and you have some kind of a range for that. And the reason we don't have negative because it is auto incrementing. So it starts from the one and goes up to this particular range. So that is a serial. So we have integer serial and then we have decimal numbers. So inside the decimal, we have two things fixed point numbers and floating point type. So, so the fixed point type also called as the arbitrary precision type is numeric. So you have to define the numeric 
precision and scale so let's say if you have the number 123.456 so the precision will determine the length of the digits on the left side of the dot so if you define precision as 5 then you can only store a number up to 5 digits you can't store more than that and you will understand this when we will do the actual hands-on practice so understand inside the fixed point you can define some kind of the limit so inside the floating point we have two different things one is the real and double precisions so the only difference here is that so the real type allows precision to six decimal digits and for the double it allows 15 decimal points so over here as you can see for the fixed point we have data type numeric or decimal and you can define the precision and scale and for the floating point we have re real and double precision that you can use to define that particular variable now let's do the hands-on practice to understand these things in detail and i'm just going to create a table with different data types so first of all i'm just going to uh, create one column for the numeric column so over here we have like the precision which is 20 so i can store a number which has 20 digits which is like something something like this should be the length of 20 dot and we have like scale as 5 so over here after the decimal decimal point should be up to 5 if i try to insert more than that then it will cut it out so it will not consider those okay so this is what it looks like so if i define this let's say 5 then you can only store a data up to 5 digits you can't store more than that so that's just what it means okay you can do that so i'm just going to keep this 20 or you can experiment whatever you want okay then we have the real column real column as we looked into the ppt so for the real data type we have six decimal digit precision and for the double data type we have 15 decimal digit precision point so i'm just going to open this and i'm just gonna run this particular thing okay so it created a table new number data types and we will just insert some of the data inside this so i'm just going to insert some random values and let's see uh, what it gives so i'm just going to do select star from number data type okay this is our table name i'm just going to run this and you'll see something so in the numeric column we defined precision as 20 and our scale was 5 so it automatically added like multiple zeros at the end of the 0.7 just to match that particular value and for real and double precision it is not doing anything let's look at this particular value so this particular thing satisfies the condition so it's just going to add that and for the all other values it's going to be same because th these particular values are proper for those particular data type then we have this particular thing so inside the third row we have added like a lot of different data so as you can see we defined our scale as 5 so it cut down everything and it just displayed data till over here and it rounded up up to uh, the nearest uh, digit so we have like 13580 over here so for the real we have like six decimal precision so it starts from the 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so you will get the value and over here we are getting like 15 decimals so it is basically giving us the entire number at the end so this is how the number works inside the PostgreSQL. Now it's easy for us to ignore these things when we are actually learning SQL because these things are not quite as exciting as it seems. But these things are really important when you are working with actually creation of a table and defining the entire data set. And that is the reason I wanted to include this particular part inside this series. Now let's look at our final data type which is date and time and that's pretty easy. We have four things timestamp which is 8 byte date time and interval so inside the timestamp you will get the entire timestamp so inside the date you will not get any time you will just get the date value so in the data type time you will get only time but you will not get any date and interval is basically if you want to add some kind of years like plus minus years so let's say if you want to add 100 years to that particular date then you can do that using interval and let's do the hands-on practice to understand this particular thing in detail so what i'm going to do i'm just going to create a table that is a simple table which is a date time time and over here i'm just going to create a column which is a timestamp column timestamp with time zone so when you are storing a data inside a table okay inside the postgres you can define if you want to store a data into utc timestamp that is the universal timestamp and if you want to store a data inside the local time zone so let's say currently um, i'm recording this video at april 13 11 pm now this is my current ist time zone now if i want to check what is the current time zone so i can just go to google and current utc time zone okay and i'll get some kind of date that, that is basically 6 26 so so utc is giving me 6 26 pm this is the universal time zone but the local time zone is 11 pm so if you want to store a data in local time zone then you need to define timestamp with time zone 
and but if you don't define then you'll get the UTC, UTC time zone then we have interval column then this is just a number that you will understand so I'm just going to run this particular query it created the table and we will insert some of the data inside this particular table so insert into and we'll just copy some values let's say first uh, I'm just going to insert this particular value which is 2018 okay I'm defining the local time zone which is the EST Eastern time zone this is some kind of date and two days so this is the interval that I want to add okay I'm just going to copy let's say I'll just add a bunch of data over here as you can see so I'm adding uh, multiple data so so time zone you can define multiple ways one is like writing the actual uh, EST the shortcut or you can add the offset so offset basically means from the UTC time zone minus 8 and then you will get the local time zone so that's the basic thing and then you can define the time zone in this way also like right by writing the country name and slash the the actual time zone or you can define now now is basically my current time zone that you we will understand and these are the intervals that you want to adjust if you want to query that particular data based on that so i'm just going to insert this and we will just uh, select this data select star from date time types i'm just going to run this particular thing and you will see a lot of different things so currently this is uh, as you can see over here uh, this is my local time zone which is like 13 April this is the current day like 11.59 and my time zone is equal to plus 5.30 which is basically the Indian time zone and now what we are seeing over here okay so this particular date data was in local time zone which was in EST now this got converted into my local time zone which was IST so 11.30 plus 5 today, which is which basically means the IST time zone so all of the data that we inserted got directly converted into the local time zone and this is just an interval that you can use to adjust these data to different things let's say if you want to add two days then you can use this interval column to add two days all of these things in the future videos when we are actually doing some of the big queries and we will do some projects and we will take some sample interview questions and we will apply all of this concept learned in that particular video but for this video i just wanted to give you the overview of different sql data types which is the character numbers and date and time there are many other data types such as boolean that did not touch but we will also do that in the future when we are actually doing more hands-on practice so thank you for watching this video i hope you learned something new and don't forget to hit the like button if you learned something new thank you